All right, we are back here at Stribblings, New York. You know, this show is not all fun and games and all things about music and books and literature and and things that we do in our leisure time. We have to make money, so in order to do that, we all, many people have our day jobs, uh, including myself, and we are sponsored not only by MC Home Loans, but by Stribbling and Associates. If you're thinking of buying, selling, renting an apartment, you need a top real estate broker, and Stribbling is the place to go, and we have uh, one of our producers and agents with us today, Tony Simone, who all has his own blog, which is really informative. I read it constantly, TonySimone.com, T-O-N-Y-S-I-M-O-N-E. Tony is joining us along with Dan Barish, who is the man responsible for the low line. Uh, on Twitter, it's lowlinenyc.com. Welcome, Dan and Tony, who is going to ask you a few questions. All right, thanks. Are we here, guys? We're here. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Dan, for coming on the show. Uh, yeah, I've been a long, a long time fan uh, of uh, all the innovative things you're doing, including the new underground park, the Low Line. Well, thanks a lot. So tell us about the Low Line. I, 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 I've given no preamble whatsoever. So yeah. So the Low Line is a plan to build uh, the world's first underground park right here in New York City, and uh, essentially it involves an abandoned former trolley terminal right below Delancey Street. It's only, uh, it was only used as a trolley terminal from 1908 to 1948, and it's been abandoned ever since. So our proposal basically is about taking back this space and turning it, it, it you know, into something really beautiful. Uh, you're probably wondering how is it possible to have an underground park. So uh, the, the, the central piece that we're bringing to this is uh, new solar technology that would bring enough sunlight underground into the space so plants and trees could grow. Uh, tell, tell us more about the innovative technology. How do you get the sunlight? And I mean, I went to visit the, um, I think the low line lab, and I was fascinated by it. I mean, what a great idea. Have parks everywhere, underground, above ground, high lines, low lines. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, in terms of how we actually deliver sunlight underground, so this is the central problem, right, on almost every sidewalk and every street in New York City and, and sort of many crowded cities around the world. Uh, there's just not a lot of sunlight on the sidewalk, right, because of sort of tall buildings uh, surrounding the streetscape. So uh, our plan is really about uh, actually uh, installing solar collectors on the rooftop of surrounding buildings um, and then reflecting that light very effectively down to the street uh, before it gets uh, reflected via a system of, of tubes uh, below the city sidewalk. And so, you know, at its most basic level, it's essentially like when you were a kid with a magnifying glass trying to kill an ant with the sun, or right, right. maybe you weren't trying to kill an ant and just uh, <laughs> see how the, how the laser worked. Uh, it's basically, like, it's basically a, a fancier version um, of that same exact concept. It's basically just redirecting light from one place to another. Now, I'm sorry, Tony. I'm okay. interrupting. I'm no, trying no, no. to go take Rob. over this show. <laughs> go, Rob. Go, Rob. I'm, I'm just so I'm excited so that Dan is here. <laughs> I, I, I was downtown a few years ago at a a restaurant in that area in Delancey Street, and I saw something about the low line there. I mean, how so? How what's the gestation period? How long has this been in the works? Yeah, it's a, so you probably were at uh, our <laughs> 2012 exhibit. Uh, so all the way back in in 2012, we actually you know went out, got a little bit of money from Kickstarter, and we took over an abandoned warehouse building and installed a version of the solar technology on the roof of that building, and we only kept that open for a couple weeks. Uh, uh, so you know we we've basically been open uh, as an organization now uh, since really 2011. I've been working on it with my business partner James Ramsey of Rad Studio for at least five years now, uh, and uh, you know over the course of the last couple of years, a lot of great things have happened. Um, as Tony mentioned, we actually just opened the Lowline Lab, which is a live laboratory and uh, showcase of how the technology functions, and we're keeping uh, an actual landscape. Uh, mini, a mini park alive, 3,000 plants, dozens of species uh, year-round. And we opened it in October, and we've already had 30,000 people into the space uh, over the last couple months. That's so, great. Um, that low-line lab is going to be open um, really for, for all of 2016. So um, it's free, and anyone can come and check it out. Tony, ask away. How, 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 sorry. Um, how do we support the low line? Like, wh what do we need to do to make it happen? Because we know New York City and government doesn't always move as quick as we would like. And <laughs> how cool would it be as, you know, this mixed housing, affordable housing, luxury housing, and then, you know, you go shopping at Essex, Mar Essex Market, and then 
can hang out in the low line. Yeah, so I know you know uh, politics pretty well, and you know how long it takes to get this kind of stuff yes. done. So, you know, we're—I would say—we're basically at the midpoint of the project. That's um, awesome. Uh, so we're sort of five years into it. We just submitted a proposal to the city, uh, and we'll see what happens from here. Hopefully, we'll be able to work with the city, uh, negotiate with the city and the MTA for access to the site. But we have a long road ahead. We have about five years of fundraising, of planning, of negotiation with the city, and um, working really closely with the local community on making sure that this thing can um, reflect the interest of the community and also be something that is viable um, from the city's perspective. So uh, we do actually need a lot of help. The first thing people can do is to come to the Low Line Lab. Uh, we are looking to showcase uh, really not only the fact that our solar technology works, um, that we can grow plants indoors and underground in this way, but also that it is a popular and exciting space that people want to keep coming back to. Um, so like I said, it's free and open to the public every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, all the way through uh, 2016, maybe even into 2017 as well. Uh, and it's a really fun thing to do. You come with the fam, you know, sort of come hang out. And uh, on, if you're anywhere near the Lower East Side on the weekend, it's a, it's a really fun activity. Um, we also, you know, are, are absolutely looking for people who um, want to make contributions and contribute to what will, I think, be a really exciting capital campaign. Um, so, you know, projects like this are not, um, are not cheap. There's a lot of... Um, uh, 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 proposals and ideas out there, but uh, what we're really planning on doing is um, uh, using a, a really innovative kind of public-private partnership in which we would be working with the city, but we a big part of our promise that we're delivering is that we would bring significant amount of private support to the project. How much money well. are you trying to raise? Well, we know we're going to need at least $60 million to, ra to, to build the actual project. Which, you know, by, by some standards, you know, we're in election season, $60 million is, is really not that much money um, when you compare it to a lot of other things that people are spending money on these days. Um, but it is expensive. It's a big project. Is there a website people can go to to find out about how they can make a contribution so everybody opens their hearts, their minds, and their wallets and pocketbooks? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So our website is thelowline.org, and uh, people can contribute there. Uh, and mm. so cer certainly financial contributions is something that we're looking for. And it's, I think it's an exciting opportunity for people who are philanthropic, uh, want to contribute something small, but also might want to take a leadership position in what will be one of the city's most exciting new public spaces. Um, so, you know, for those of you who uh, have, have gotten out there and seen some of the other beautiful public spaces in the city, most of them are supported with some mix of the public and private support. So, you know, it is uh, really essential that we sort of do, do uh, you know, get that kind of uh, groundswell of, of supporters of all different kinds. Well, I would think that based on the, the, the success of the High Line that, and, and the amount of people that, that are there, that this should evoke a big response. Yeah, I mean, the High Line is uh, just such an incredible project, right? It, uh, in a similar way, it, it involved the reclamation of an abandoned elevated um, uh, railway. And now it's one of the most visited sites anywhere in the city. It delivers, uh, you know, a ton of um, attention and foot traffic to the neighborhood. It's 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 dramatically um, add to the, added to the transformation of the neighborhood. Uh, and so I think that's something that you know people are looking at the low line as as potentially a catalyst for helping um, uh, the surrounding neighborhood uh, grow in a way that is not just about um, sort of commercial and retail development, but actually ensures some level of public space. What, what we're proposing is a football field-sized public space that would be free and open to the public. That would be, if, if you could expand it and make it as large as you wanted, that would pretty much be the size that we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, that the, was the, my next question. Yeah, this site itself is really limited by uh, the constraints uh, that are very unique to that site, right? It's directly across from the Jay-Z subway track, um, uh, um, uh, Right there at the Delancey and Essex. Uh, we were talking about this in the green room before. <laughs> right. Tony was was questioning <laughs> Dan about Jay Z, and he knew the answer right away, which is that the the what do we call him? An entrepreneur, the rapper, uh, music M impresario, Jay Z, music named himself <laughs> musical entertainer. He named himself after the Jay Z subway lines, which uh -huh. converge at the uh -huh. Marcy projects. Uh -huh. So wait, Dan, how how did you come to be the person, Mister Lowline? I've known you a long time, and I was like, you know, I always wanted to invent something. You know, Robbie Hammond, who we love, is the high line. And one day you came up with this idea with, I believe, your co-founder, who I don't know personally. But, yeah, like, what made you think of, like, let's put a, build a park on the ground? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I was, um, I think, as with all uh, uh, or many innovative projects, it started from, from boredom, actually. Um, I was uh, a couple of jobs ago working at uh, 
uh, Google. And the um, uh, thing that I was most interested in in the underground was the unused potential of subterranean inventory, basically, and looking at how we could create beautiful environments underground. Uh, and so, you know, over too much wine, uh, a friend of mine, James <laughs> Ramsey, who's now my co-founder for the project. Best ideas over uh, wine. Ex- always. Um, uh, he and bourbon, too. And bourbon. Uh, he, uh, you know, said, li- listen, I know this one site, and, and do you want to work on it? Well, we, we're going to have to save this for part two because we just got a signal from the booth that it's time to wrap. But I really appreciate you coming in and joining us. And We'd love Tony to have you back. Tony was great, too. So we'll have you back soon. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks for having me. Thank you.